Well, good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone enjoyed that first speech. That was completely incredible. Like Anne said, my name is Serena Christensen. And when I first meet people, I have a game in my head I play. Because when you meet someone, they ask, OK, your name, where you're from, and what do you do? I have the option of telling them three different things that I do. I actually hold three different jobs. First, I'm a, the, the program coordinator and assistant professor of business at Williston State College. My second job is that I'm the co-founder of K. Michael Lee Studio, Williston's newest stan dance studio. I founded that with my sister. And third, I'm a group fitness instructor and a personal trainer with Anytime Fitness. So it's fun when I'm meeting someone and they say, hey, Serena, what is it that you do? And then I say, I do X. And if you talk to people that know me, one of the first things we're going to say is Serena loves to explore things. She loves to travel. She likes to go into new places. And I even did that today, going to a little coffee shop downtown. It was cookies and me or something like that. Beautiful, beautiful coffee. And with Williston, a lot of change has been happening. And I think you all have noticed that. And one of those changes is a lot of businesses are coming to the area. And more importantly, to me at least, more restaurants are coming. And about a year ago, I went to this new restaurant. It's called the Pita Palace. So I walked in, and there's this little jar sitting right by the register. And it said, do you know what Pita is spelled backwards? A tip. When I read that, I instantly laughed. I thought it was great marketing. It made me think of this place in a positive light. I went, I sat down, and I ate my food, which was great, and I left. And I started thinking about that tip jar, and I wondered to myself, why is it that people are so willing to give up their change from their pocket, but they don't want to give up that dollar bill? Why is it that they see that currency and they think, let's just get rid of it, put it in there? It doesn't matter to us. It's because for some reason, people see change as a burden as something that's heavy, that carries a lot of weight, so let's just dismiss it and move on. Upon further reflection, I realized, oh my gosh, this is how people view change in their entire lives, not just with money, but with their personal and their professional lives. Now, I'm speaking to you today as someone, as Anne mentioned, that I am a Williston native, which is a rarity these days. I was born and I was raised in Williston. I left for college and I came back, and I experienced a lot of just different changes with how people act and how they behave. But I've also noticed things about people that make them stand out and also make them react to change in different ways. Let me paint what Williston was like. When I was growing up, you were either of Scandinavian or German descent. Your favorite type of music was most likely country. And I kid you not, we love to celebrate every holiday, if possible, with a parade. And if you're from Williston, you know this is true. We love our parades. Now with the oil boom, a lot of change has come to Williston. We have increased traffic, more businesses, more people everywhere. It's not that you are a Scandinavian and of German descent. If anything, you come from all over the world. And now, I kid you not, you drive down the street, you hear reggae, you hear rap, all these different type of genres. But we have held on to those parades. That definitely has not left when it comes to Williston. And you talk to people in this, in this region, including Minot, and you will notice there's a bad taste in their mouth when it comes to change. They're really upset about it. And in Williston, especially when I was growing up, they said, oh my gosh, I wish people knew where Williston was. I wish we weren't just the middle of nowhere that people questioned us when we said where we were. And this even happened in our own state. I remember one time I was competing in a golf tournament and I was in Fargo, and I was talking to someone, and she said, hey, where are you from? And I said, Williston. And deer in the headlights look, no idea where Williston was. And she was from North Dakota. But now, one, it's a whole 180. People know all over the world where Williston is. This summer, I had the opportunity to travel to, two, to six states, actually, because I am in that age group where everyone's getting married. So I was going to different places, and every single time I would get on my flight, I'd sit down, and they'd ask where you're from. North Dakota. Oh, that light of recognition in their eyes. OK, where from in North Dakota? I am from Williston. And they asked, oh, OK, I've heard of that. That's on the other side of the state from Fargo, which b just blew my mind that they knew that. And I said, yes. And what really surprised me was that they knew things about Williston. It wasn't just the bad things. Yes, we have increase in crime and that our strippers, for some reason, make an insane amount of money every night. But they knew about the positive things that were happening in our town, that we have a really incredible economy. I think the last time I heard about our unemployment rate, it was less than 1%. That's incredible, less than 1% unemployment. And people knew about this, and they would ask, how do I get in on that? How do I become an entrepreneur and talk about it? They had such a positive image of what that change is. But for some reason, people in this region, they're really scared about it. They're really hesitant 
about it because they, for some reason, feel that with that change, their identity is being compromised. I hear all the time people say, I miss the old Williston. I want it to be what it used to be. And I want you today to realize that the identity isn't changing, the character isn't changing, just the form of it, the presentation of it is changing. When I was in my introduction to psychology class when I was in college, we talked about insanity. And the definition of it is someone who does the exact same thing over and over and over again and expects different results. Now, I'm not saying that Williston or people from Minot or North Dakota are crazy, but there's no way that we can keep doing the exact same thing and all of a sudden we now have a Target, that we have a Starbucks, that we have concert halls. That there has to be some kind of movement, there has to be some kind of change that's happening. So the first thing I want you to take away from today, that if you want progress to occur, you have to let go of what used to be. If you want progress to occur, you have to let go of what used to be. And this is something we can apply to our personal lives, too. I think everyone in this room, I, when New Year's Day comes around, we're like, okay, yes, all right, I'm going to make the New Year's resolution, I'm losing weight. I'm really excited, it's going to be great. And I meet with people constantly as a personal trainer, talk to them about it. And we discuss their, their eating habits, their exercise habits, what do they need to do to change? And I tell them, okay, I, I know you really enjoy that bowl of chocolates on your desk, but if you want to be stronger, faster, thinner, you're going to have to give that up. You have to let go of what used to be so you can get that progress to happen. Now, when it comes to change, you're either going to be implementing the change or experiencing the change, and no matter what side of that fence you fall on, there are two things I really want you to be. Please be authentic and please be appreciative of that change. So let's talk about implementing the change. In Williston, a lot of people come to me when they want to put on an event or whatever it may be because they, for some reason, see me as a change agent. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is the same for this crowd here because you're at a TED event. And I feel like people who go to TED, they listen to TED, those are the people of change. They love it, they really embrace it. And probably because if you want something done, you go to a busy person and they can get it done for you. And so when they come to me, they say, Serena, I really want your help, I trust you, and it's because I've always been authentic. The person that you're seeing today, this is the person you're going to see in my classroom. This is a person you're going to see at the dance stu studio and also in the gym. The only thing that's different is how I present myself. Of course, I wouldn't wear this when I'm teaching spin, and I wouldn't have this on when I'm teaching my tap class. But who I am, my character, my identity is staying the same. Even to this crazy curly hair, I guarantee you this is natural. This isn't a perm or anything different. This is Serena. When I became the, Will the, club, the club president excuse me, for our Williston Rotary Club, that was in July, and a lot of people were really he hesitant about it. They were scared of what I was going to do because I was young, and they knew I was energetic, and they were like, okay, what is she going to do? When I approached the club, I told them, I really appreciate where our club has been. I want to honor those traditions. I want to keep those there, but I want to make new ones. So what I was trying to do was set the tone of that authenticity of we're not going to completely change our club 100%. Let's keep what makes us real, that character, but let's move forward. And I need you to be a part of this. I need you with me in it. And with that, I was showing my appreciation for the club, that for change to happen, we can't do it alone. We have to have people with us. We have to make them understand the benefit of whatever that's happening. And I'm sure you people here today, you understand what's happening in this region. I know of too many people that work 12, 15-hour days because they're crazy understaffed at their places, or the workload is just so much, they don't know what to do with it. So hopefully, when you're implementing that change, you can show that authenticity of staying true to yourself, but also appreciate it. Another topic when it comes to implementing the change is benchmarking. And I'm sure you, hopefully you've heard of this, and if not, let me explain. We study this in business school all the time. It's the idea that you emulate something that someone is doing really well. How do I become the next Applebee's? How do I become the next Apple, Walmart, Target, whatever? How do I become that next big thing? This is something we study all the time, and I teach my students about it too. But one thing is, we never talk about what does it feel like to be the one that's benchmarked? And I tell you what, it is incredibly frustrating. It is so hard to see someone take your idea, copy it, and make it their own. Pretend that it was their original idea. Now, it is completely okay to be frustrated. Own that frustration, but let go of it, because realize that those people thought that you were someone worth watching, that they were aware of what you were doing. So why not try what that company is doing or what that individual is doing? So appreciate that what you're doing, someone's paying attention. And like I said, with the change, 
You're probably experiencing it. And I think we are all here in the oil boom, right here in North Dakota. This oil boom has really changed our lives. So how do we maintain that authenticity and appreciation when sometimes we don't even understand? The biggest thing I can tell you is have a support group. Have somebody that you can vent to and say, I can't believe all this road construction. I can't believe that we have more buildings that are coming. All these people, they're throwing things around. We don't understand what they're doing. Try to see the good in it. Those, and that support system, I guarantee you, they'll keep you authentic. That's what's worked for me, is I have people that I can talk to, and they keep Serena Serena, that I am who I am. It's interesting when you talk about that, because if you mention that to someone, they'll say, oh, wow, I never even realized that before. That even though I'm not the one implementing the change, I should try to stay who I am. That maybe your job duties are going to change, that maybe your tasks are going to change, but does that mean your personality, your character, your integrity is changing? No. My not is staying the same. Its form is changing. How it's behaving is changing. Same for Williston. We still have the same values. We same ha- have the same persona, but we're simply adapting to the situation. We're trying to manipulate things so it works better in our favor. It makes sense that we need to have more roads, more buildings, because we have more people. So it's a good thing when it comes to that. So remember, if you want progress to occur, you have to let go of what used to be. So next time you're in that meeting, they say, okay, you know what? Let's have a new software update. We want new hours, new people are coming. You're going to be frustrated. I want you to stop and think, where do I see myself? Where do I see my organization? Where do I want my community to be? Realize for that vision to be fulfilled, it's going to take time, but it's going to take patience, and you have to be authentic and appreciative of what's happening around you. Now, I'm not telling you that next time you go to a restaurant or you see that donation bucket, you say, you know what, no, Serena told me to keep the change. I can keep it to myself. That's not at all what I want you to do. If anything, give them the dollar bill because I want you to look at them straight in the face and say, you know what, I'll keep the change. Thank you.